Hey, hey, hey. So um, are there myths? Are there things that we believe to be true about chakras? And we might not really understand them. And I think that there are a few. Um, you might not really be a chakra believer yet. And so I want to impress upon you uh, or explain some things that might be troubling or you just might not understand. And it's very important for us to understand the chakras. It's very important for us to understand what they represent um, and kind of the meaning behind why is this even important to understand our energetic body uh, and not just our physical body. And hopefully then we can take this into what will be the final part of this, how to get aligned, just to be sure that we, uh, as we understand and understand the myths, then we embrace the truths and we begin to have the in universal energy flow through us. So this is a little bit more of a teaching um, session here. So I want you to follow along with me. And as always, I'm looking over here because I have notes and things like that, that I have actually put in place. Now, there are some myths about the chakras, okay? There are some myths about the chakras, and I want to discuss those myths because I think it's important for us to understand it and, and embrace it and um, understand the origins and all that. Modern day, modern day chakra belief um, is an ancient energy system and that came from the writings of the Vedas, okay? Those are ancient Hindu philosophical texts that were written between 1500 and 500 BC, or now they say BCE, so before Christ, okay? Um, the Vedas are a collection of poems, hymns, and spiritual writings that um, impart this uh, knowledge of the religion of Hinduism, but also and part this uh, origin and symbolism and the, the names of, and the purposes, right, of the chakras. Now, the names of each chakra are Sanskrit. I'm going to encourage you to look that up. We've talked about that a little bit here, but it's very easy to find out. Um, and they each have a root sound, Okay. They each have a root sound. Now, one thing that I want you, and that's all of them, but we really only, we typically deal with the seven, we call them main chakras. Um, but honestly, there are more than, there are not only seven chakras. There are, I believe, I'm of the belief that there are 12 main chakras and there are endless energy centers all throughout your body. And remember, chakras are not necessarily physical. You can't reach out and touch your chakra. Okay? You can't do that. Um, but it is the subtle energy that is behind the animation of and the operation of your physical being. So that's why you'll hear people say, oh, chakras, that's just a lie. I, I've, seen, I've seen articles, many articles that talk about how chakras... Um, you know, they don't actually uh, control or have any dealings with any specific, um, you know, areas of the body, functions of the body. You can believe what you want to believe or not believe what you want to believe. That's completely fine with me. Like, I'm not here to make you believe one way or the other. All I'm here to do is present you the information and just tell you what I've seen in my own personal life. So the energy, of course, can't be touched. So yeah, it, it, whatever. But they're not just seven. We deal with the seven main in our body, but there's actually 12. And I do go over that in my Limitless Lightworker certification program. And I've got a couple other 12 chakra, which we might put that up here. I've got a 12 chakra um, uh, 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 a series of videos where I teach on the 12 chakras. So, you know, we may make that available to folks here. We're going to figure that out now um, where you might be able to go and link in the bio and, and, and go grab that and download it for free. So you can get to know the 12 chakra system. So we'll have a link somewhere where you guys can download that 
for free. Okay. Now, so it's important though for you to understand that there's not only seven. So when people say, well, you're seven soccer, no, you have more. Okay. Um, the second myth is that they're the color of the rainbow. They're technically colorless, technically, right? Because they're energy. I like to think of it as because we understand or have an, an, an under understanding of the frequency in which they are, or the range of frequencies where they are at their most powerful, where they're aligned, where they're at their optimal operation, those frequencies not only have a sound, but they also have a color. So that's why I believe, you know, we can assign a color to them. So no people, they don't technically have a color, but those of us that can see auras and we see colors, we see it. And then I'm going to say scientifically, I understand that the frequencies assigned also have a corresponding color and light. Okay. Um, and if you notice, I'm pronouncing chakra as chakra because it's the C is like a CH is in church, right? So it's not chakra. I mean, it would, but it's, you know, I'm trying to pronounce it correctly. So it's chakra. All right. Um, one of the other major myths is that they were discovered first in through Hinduism and that it's completely false and eh, not true. Um, actually, you can go all the way back to ancient Kemet and each of like, if you go up the river Nile, um, you will find that each of the gods, goddesses, like the Kemets understood chakras and energy centers. That's why there's something called Sekhmet Reiki. That is a different type of Reiki based in Kemetic um, spirituality. But in the Kemetic um, um, way of the system, the root chakra is still red earth. There is red earth over there. It's Egypt is the mother. It begins. So Lake Nasser would be this energetic root chakra um, that purifies like the untruths and you begin the awakening right in that lake. The sacral chakra then um, goes up to Abu Simbel. Um, that's at the root chakra. And then from there you move to, um, file, which is the, um, divine mother or Isis light. So you go to that sacral creative area. Um, then the solar plexus come It's the, it's that's in the temple of Horus and set. So that's where you find the power within, um, and realizing that the true power comes from love and not from hate set right? Um, hate, set, right? Um, Dendera or Hator, that that goddess, the divine mother, um, the lady of the stars, the goddess of the Milky Way, she's the heart chakra. The throat chakra then was considered turquoise blue, and that's where you recognize the embodiment um, of the divine and the action. You begin to speak truth. You start speaking life, not death. The third eye chakra, the the is the all seeing eye of Horus, okay. And then um, when you get to the Great Pyramid of Giza, um, that's where you get to the atonement or the at one mint, and you get the I am energy, where you and your father or you and the Creator are one, cause and effect. Like that is this this height of. Um, enlightenment and you have, you know, love is an embodiment, right? So you could go up through the seven temples and, and, and then you would reach the same pinnacle or crown chakra as you would going through the chakras and enlightenment. So hopefully those have given you some, that's given you some actual, like, I don't know, insight into um, the chakras. And we are going to talk a little bit more about uh, this alignment in the next video, in the next day. Um, and then we're going to talk about at one mint or atonement in the next one. Never forget, okay, give permission to your purpose to provide for your